In this video, I will show a couple of examples using the number theory package. This will include topics such as prime numbers, arithmetic functions, and some related visualizations. As you can see in this table, Maple includes many more interesting math apps and interactive examples that explore other topics in number theory. There are also many more commands in the number theory package that you can read more on in the Maple help system. Many commands from the number theory package are available in the right-click context menu. Say we're down to a fraction, something like 3 over 7. We can change the display of this fraction to something like a repeated decimal by right-clicking on the fraction and choosing to show as repeating decimal from the context menu. We can also show this in a continued fraction expansion. We can do this by right-clicking, choosing show as continued fraction expansion, and we get the resulting display. For the next few examples, it's important to know that most of the commands used are also available in the right-click context menu. But they're also available through using the equivalent maple command. Next, let's spend some time looking at some examples with prime numbers. So as we all know, a prime number is a natural number greater than one that has no positive divisors other than one and itself. The top level ith prime command returns the ith prime. So we can here do an example where we use a sequence to show the first 10 primes. The top level is prime command determines if a given number is prime. This will return false if a number is not prime and true if a number is prime. So if we use the is prime command on the value 28, you can see this returns the value false. And I'll show you this as well through the context menu. So if we right click instead of using the command is prime, we can right click on 29. We can go down to queries and choose is prime number. And this tells us true that 29 is in fact a prime number. Now the divisors command actually can be used as another way to verify if a number is prime or not. We can kind of tell this by, if, if we run the divisors command on a given integer, if the results are either just one in itself, in this case the value is going to be prime, or if the number, if the list contains more values than that, then obviously the number is not prime because there are more factors. So let's try divisors on 28. We can see here that the list does contain 1 and 28, but also several more values, so there are more factors here, so obviously this value is not prime. Let's again try this using the context menu. So we'll choose to right click on 29 and we'll just from the top level context menu choose divisors. So we get the positive divisors of 29. We can see that this is only 1 and 29. So in this case obviously this must be a prime number. It meets the definition of a prime number. So let's do some more examples. So the sum of divisors command returns the sum of divisors for an integer. So in the case of 28 this is simply just going to sum up these values here. So, sum of divisors is 56. The top level i factor command gives the integer factorization of an integer. So here we can do i factor of 28, and we can see that the integer factorization of 28 is going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 7. The prime factors command returns a list of factors for a given integer that are primes without multiplicity. So we can do prime factors of 28, and the prime factors here are 2 and 7. The number of prime factors command returns the number of prime factors of an integer counted with multiplicity. So in this case, if we look at the previous two commands here, we see prime factors are 2 and 7, but we also see from i factor that it's 2 times 2, so it's 2 squared, times 7. So the number of prime factors counted with multiplicity obviously is going to be 3. It's these 2, 2, and 7. Uh, some more commands for working with prime numbers. The top level next prime or previous prime commands return the next or previous prime number after or before the given integer. So we knew before that uh, 29 is a prime. So if we do next prime after 29, we'll see that the next prime after 29 is 31. Now an interesting command is the prime counting command, and this returns the number of primes less than a given integer. So 
prime counting command returns that there are 11 primes previous to 31. Now two integers are relatively prime, co-prime, if their greatest common divisor, or their GCD, is 1. The R co-prime command tests if a sequence of integers or Gaussian integers are co-prime. So let's look at R co-prime of 5 and 8. So these, in fact, are co-primes. The, the common, greatest common divisor of these two is just going to be 1. But R co-prime of 2 and 8, which we should be able to tell very quickly, is in fact false because the greatest common divisor in this case is going to be 2. An interesting way we can visualize this is using a command from statistics. It's called a heat map. And if we can make a new matrix where the values of this matrix correspond to uh, if a number in a given row is co-prime with another number in a given column, we can run this and we can very quickly pick out and we can see the values here that 1 and 1 and 2 and 2, and we can kind of go through and we can pick out from this table uh, which numbers are co-prime with other numbers. So basically looking at this, this would mean that it, uh, it corresponds to any red cell is going to be cases where we have co-primes, and any white cell where the greatest common divisor of a row versus a column is going to be not 1. So obviously the greatest common divisor of 2 and 2 is going to be 2, or 2 and 4 is going to be 2, so these cases are false to the R co-prime command. Alright, so moving on, an integer is called square-free if it's not divisible by the square of another number other than 1. So all prime numbers are square-free. So is square-free 31? It's true. Is square-free of two primes multiplied together, so 7 times 101 is true. And is square free of 3 times 7 squared is false, because we have this 7 squared, so this is obviously not square free. So to conclude this, exam uh, this section, I wanted to sh quickly show uh, an example for working and, and looking at prime numbers as well as looking at uh, factors of various numbers. And, and this is going to use the sieve of Eratosthenes. So if we open this up, uh, this covers the background on the method for finding prime numbers. And here we have a, a big diagram, and uh, you can see here's the legend. So as we start our animation, we can watch as this animation goes through, and it finds prime numbers, or this is this blue. Multiples of those initial found prime values are going to be uh, yellow in the case of 2, red in the case of 3, purple in the case of 5, and as you can see, we kind of fill this out as we go. So this is going to very quickly let us illustrate in blue all the prime numbers from 0 to 100. And it's kind of a, a neat way we can step through. And you can see here with the sliders, we can bump up the number of rows, number of columns. And we can quickly visualize the, the primes, uh, as well as any factors of certain values uh, under a given value. The next set of examples I want to discuss are several examples of arithmetic functions. Euler's totient function is an arithmetic function that counts the number of positive integers less than or equal to a given value n that are co-prime to n. For a positive integer n, another number k is said to be co-prime, or relatively prime, if the GCD, the greatest common divisor of n and k, is equal to 1. So for example, 14 and 15 are co-prime because the GCD of 14 and 15 is 1, but 14 and 21 are not co-prime since their GCD is 7. So we saw this in the, in the previous section when we were discussing the R co-prime command. Euler's totient function is also known as Euler's phi function and can be denoted as either phi of n or this other phi of n as a variant on this. As such, phi n and var phi n are aliases for this totient command. I just wanted to show this very quickly because you'll see that any one of these is going to be a valid way or a valid syntax for running this command in Maple. They'll all return the exact same value for the totient of the value 21. Now, to visualize this, this becomes some, something we can visualize pretty easily with a point plot. Uh, we can create a sequence here of n versus totient of n for values, say, between 2 and 1,000. So if I run this, I can see here this is all the 
values here for the first th thousand values of the totient function of n. Now to contrast this, we can look at something like the prime counting, otherwise known as the pi command, uh, which returns the number of primes less than an integer n. And we can do so, and I'm going to use a special command here. I'm going to use something out of the dynamic systems package. It's called a discrete plot. And the reason I like using this plot is it gives us these little tails for our points. So here we can see is the, in red, the pi, which is our prime counting. So we can count the number of primes less than a value. And the blue here is our totient. So we can use this as a way of uh, contrasting these two to see how these stack up over, say, the first 40 values. Now, the Mobius function is a multiplicative arithmetic function, mu of r, where the following is true. So mu of r is equal to 1 if r is a square free positive integer with an even number of prime factors, minus 1 if r is a square free positive integer with an odd number of prime factors, and 0 where r has a squared prime factor. So for example, mu of 2 or the Mobius function of 2 is equal to minus 1 because 2 is a square free positive integer which has one prime factor. Mu of 4 is 0 since 4 is not a square free positive integer. The first 75 values for the Mobius function can be plotted in the following chart. So we can see here as we move across we have all the values from 0 to 75 at these three discrete levels. So we have 1, 0, and minus 1. Alright, so the last example I want to show you is an example of a Kalkin-Wilf tree. The vertices of the Kalkin-Wilf tree are labeled with rational numbers a over b. The root vertex is defined to be 1 over 1, and for any vertex a over b, its children are a over a plus b, and a plus b over b. Every positive rational number occurs exactly once in the Kalkin-Wilf tree. So the first 16 terms of the Kalkin-Wilf sequence are as follows. Now I like showing examples using the Kalkin-Wilf tree because uh, it lets us use the graph theory package to create some pretty interesting demonstrations. So what I've done here is I've put together a procedure which uses the graph theory graph command to draw the Kalkin Wilf tree for various values n. So let me just execute my procedure here and I want to show you what this tree looks like as, as we have different values of n. And here I'm going to choose 15, so basically 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. Draw the tree here and we can see all the branches. So we start 1 over 1 and then we have the two connecting nodes here, so we have 1 over 2, which if we go back up, remember this was a over a plus b, and in the case we have 2, it's technically 2 over 1, but it's a plus b, so 1 plus 1 over 1. So as we move down, we can see here 1 over 3, 3 over 2, 2 over 3, 3. We can see that we get the natural numbers on the right side here. Uh, another way of visualizing this is using a graph style called a spring and uh, we can do this for say 2 to the power of 5 minus 1, so 31 and draw that tree and we can see this uh, the same structure here. So we start with 1 over 1, its two vertices here are going to be 1 over 2, so a over a plus b and then we have a plus b over b which is going to be 2 and so on as we iterate down this tree. All right, so that's just a few examples that I wanted to show you from number theory. Uh, if you'd like to view these examples again, you can do so in Maple's help system. If you go into help, Maple help, and if you browse down through the help system, if you look under mathematics, we'll go down to the number theory category and look under examples. You'll see here there are several examples that we've talked about today. And uh, actually, in fact, several of these examples are covered in these arithmetic functions, divisibility, uh, and prime numbers examples, but you also see there's extra examples here for things like Mercian primes and working with Gaussian integers.